All right, now that we are all finished with that activity, everyone did a really nice job, and I'm really impressed with how well you guys are catching on. Last thing we have to do is tie down a definition. That's gonna be in the very bottom box right here, number seven. So now that we've filled out all of our characteristics, reviewed our examples and non-examples, we, and we practice them, we can make a final definition together. So to tie down a final definition, we do have to use all of our always present characteristics in our definition. So our final definition will be, imagery is a literary device that uses descriptive language that appeals to the senses in order to describe something in a way for readers to form a mental image. And then we can go through and we can see, we can go ahead and highlight, underline, whatever you prefer, all of our always present characteristics that we use in our definition. So we have uses descriptive language, appeals to the senses in order to describe something in a way for readers to form a mental image. I'll give everyone a couple of seconds to write that down and get it all figured out. So, your final copy of this should look like this. If you have any questions, if you're missing anything, take the time to fill it out now or to ask me any questions that you may have. All right, everyone's doing good. So using the CER for this one, we did the concept mastery routine. So remembering the acronym CONCEPT, C-O-N-C-E-P-T will help you remember the linking steps, which is what we just did going through all of these, and the process to use when understanding a new and complex concept. You can use this for things other than imagery and literary devices. If you think it might help you on the unit exam, you can do one for each literary device. I highly suggest doing that to study off of, or you can take it to other classes as well. So let's review the content one last time. So all together, what is the concept name? Imagery. Exactly. What about the overall concept name? Imagery literary device. Exactly. And can I get a volunteer to tell me one key word we identified? It describes something. Perfect. Some other key words that we had was Appeals of senses, mental image, figurative language, and comparison. Can I get a volunteer for, to tell me what one always present characteristic is? Appeals to the senses. Perfect. We also have descriptive language, describes something, and involves forming a mental image. Who can tell me one sometimes present characteristic? Literal language? Yep and figurative language, and we also have metaphors and similes for comparisons. Altogether, what is the one never-present characteristic that we have? Technical language. Awesome. All right, what is one example of imagery? Who can tell me? Shines, sparkles. Perfect. <laughs> what about a non-example of imagery? Talking about the weather. Talking about the weather and not describing it? Yeah. Perfect. All right, share with your table partner a new example of imagery. I'll give everyone about 
60 seconds to do that. All right, good job guys. I'm hearing some really good examples of imagery. All right, moving on. Share with your table partner a non-example of imagery. Remember, non-examples are not opposites. They're just missing an always present characteristic. All right, guys, good job. I'm hearing some really good ones. And it looks like you all know what a non-example is. All right, lastly, share with your table partner what is the definition of imagery. Give you guys about 30 more seconds. <laughs> nice job, guys. You're all doing a really great job. I can tell you're really paying attention. All right, that is the end for of this lesson. Our next lesson will be writing imagery of our own and applying it to our own writings in the future. And that's it. You guys are welcome to do free time.